Hello and a very good evening and welcome to the Jewish Community, Jewish Representative Council of Greater Manchester Reg and Regions Community Stars event. My name's Angela Epstein and I'm here to guide you through tonight's, well it's not an awards event actually because there are no winners. This evening is here to recognise the contribution that so many have made in so many ways to support our community and the wider community as well. Now, many people who are nominated um, have declined to, uh, to come forward and show themselves. Why? <laughs> we want to celebrate all of you, but they've asked to stay in the shadows, but we know who you are. But to them, we say a huge thank you. You are all stars for the contribution you make to our community. Um, we've also received many videos and writ written wishes, and uh, we've had to edit some of them, so please bear with us. Uh, we would really, if we had the time, like to show everything, but unfortunately we can't. Um, we're beaming out live from the very glamorous setting of the Nikki Alliance Centre, um, every expense spared. Not not really because this is not about glamour this is about people and what people do for our community of course in previous years we've had the good fortune of, uh, of hosting this in a big hall like the Hilton Suite and elsewhere and hundreds of people would have would have attended but of course we all know due to those dreaded words COVID restrictions and they're still in place um, for a few more days or a few more weeks uh, that sadly couldn't happen this year so please do become you know be part of this interactive event use emojis clap, especially for me, um, send hearts, likes, positive comments. Um, if you're feeling negative, see ya. And, um, you know, we just want to feel the love and the support because there are so many people to celebrate this evening. So without further ado, and before we start showing you some of these incredible stories, I'm going to hand you over now to Russell, Russell Conn, who is president of the Jewish Representative Council of Greater Manchester and Region. And he's going to tell us a little bit about, about the awards and about the importance of our community. Thank you very much, Angela. Good evening, everyone, and thank you very much for zooming in to this Community Stars event. Um, the GRC, as we're now called, is honoured to be hosting this event and to pay our own tribute to some exceptional men and women who throughout the last 12 months have demonstrated the highest standards of selfless behaviour, have put the wants and needs of others in the community way above their own requirements. But we also must remember those members of this community and communities worldwide who have sadly passed away through COVID and our thoughts are with their families and friends. As my colleague, the former chair, Jackie Buxbaum, is going to be highlighting the wonderful examples of all the individuals who have been nominated this evening, I will content myself with congratulating each and every one of the nominees and say what a privilege it is to represent this amazing community and how blessed we are to have so many dedicated people who day in and day out provide so much by way of volunteering. This community could not achieve a fraction of what we do without your incredible work. May I also express my own personal thanks to the video you will see in a moment from our very own Chief Rabbi. Chief, you are a shining example to us all and we are privileged to have you as our head. Likewise, if I may, I'd like to also give my own personal thanks to Lord Greenhouse, the Government Minister for Communities, for his very kind letters, which will be read out later. We are exceptionally fortunate that we live in a time and have an administration who recognises the enormous contribution the Jewish community of this nation make. This only spurs us to greater heights, and we are honouring this evening a section of our amazing community for the efforts you have made during this very difficult and dark period. I think we're now going to see a video from uh, Jackie Buxbaum and from Mark Levy. Good evening, I'm Jackie Buxbaum and I'm Chair of the Jewish Representative Council. I've said on many occasions during my three years in that position, that the Manchester Jewish community is the most amazing community in the whole world. And so it was no surprise to me that when the pandemic hit, that our community responded in the most wonderful way. I said at a recent council meeting that we responded at three levels. We responded on an individual level with many members of the community stepping up and taking on responsibility either for their neighbours or for people further apart to help them. Also an organisational level, the organisations within our community stepped up. They took on responsibility. Their first 
aim was to help everybody rather than to care about where the funding was coming from. And they, over the course of the past 15 months, have done a most amazing job. And finally, the third level was on a national level, where the Board of Deputies and the Jewish Leadership Council took it upon themselves to introduce programmes for the whole of the national Jewish community. And there are many communities within Manchester that have benefited from these, and I would like on our behalf to thank them. Tonight, though, is about the first two of those organisations, both the organisations and the individuals. It constantly amazes me when I go out and meet people in the wider community to discover just how much we take for granted that other organisations and communities do not have. I recall on one occasion early in the pandemic, a Muslim cleric stating that none of the communities had got their act in order with regarding to sorting out burials, except for Miss Askim, the Jewish organisation, who was streets ahead of everybody else. And it is tonight that we have come together as a community to honour both the individuals and the organisations who have made Manchester such a wonderful place, not just during the past 15 months, but for a very long time before that. They say you don't know what you've got until it's gone, and tonight is about honouring not just those who have received awards, but all those in our community who step up on a daily basis to help the community and individuals within the community so that we will never have to forget what we've got. And on that note, I would like to thank you all tonight. Good night. We're going to hear from our very esteemed Chief Rabbi, Rabbi Ephraim Mervis. I'm delighted to extend my very best wishes to everyone in the Manchester Jewish community. And in particular, I'd like to say how deeply impressed I have been to hear about the extraordinary activities of all of the recipients of the Community Stars Awards. Congratulations to you for the inspiration that you've provided me and so many others through your selfless volunteering during particularly challenging times. We cannot thank you enough. God bless you all. Always wonderful to hear the wise words of the Chief Rabbi and we thank him for his contribution this evening. So moving on to the real stars of the show, no uh, disrespect there Chief, but uh, the real stars of the show who are the people who we are celebrating this evening for the wonderful contributions they've made to this community and as Russell said earlier, without them so many things simply could not happen, especially during the last um, 12 months and more and all the, um, all the restrictions and all the pressures that have gone with the pandemic. Um, we've decided to group um, all, the con all the nominees, if you like, tonight, all the people we're celebrating into sort of sections just to give you a, a, a kind of mosaic of all the things that go on within the community and all the wonderful things that people do for us all here in Manchester and beyond and for other communities as well. Now, throughout lockdown in particular, we've, uh, we've seen what an impact it's had on our young people. They've missed out on their education. They've not been able to attend youth movement um, events. Um, they've just been separated from all the things that should be a rite of passage and all the things that should come to them naturally and they should be entitled to enjoy. Um, we've received many, many messages from parents asking us to thank the staff of our schools who've done an amazing job. Um, I'm not going to list all the schools for fear of missing them out. Uh, or showing favouritism, which I never would. Um, but there are some incredible uh, schools and, and, and educators, and we're going to see that in a moment. Um, some of the people and some of the organisations that aren't represented on video, um, I'd just like to make mention of here, um, the Ali I Youth Project, uh, the Supper Club and Crossroads, Crossroads, not the programme, worked so very hard giving to support to so many young people. Um, the Aliyah project, for example, became a place where young people could relax and enjoy activities and also talk. And then there's scouts, guides, cubs, brownies throughout the community carried on uh, indefatigably, you know, via Zoom, organising activities, weekend camps and really sort of, you know, engendering the enthusiasm of young people, especially when many of them, even though they loved their screens before, were probably starting to exper experience kind of computer fatigue. So we thank them. Um, and now I'm going to uh, hand you over to the screen and you're going to see some of the wonderful people uh, that we're celebrating this evening. Uh, first of all, it's an honour to be on this video. I was very impressed with the projects of uh, Jewish Community Stars, stars in our community. And the four pupils I recommended for the awards, I felt were amazing what they did. All the children here have been amazing during lockdown, especially when they've come back to school still smiling, raising the spirits of all the staff here. The teachers have been amazing and the staff. 
but they've kept smiles on the faces. They've really been very resilient. But the four children that have stood out have done extra within the community. For instance, Talia Lewis baked cakes for frontline workers in the hospitals, and it really went on very well, that. Not only that, we had Nadav Whelan um, walking during the last lockdown, doing many miles of walking, raising money for the Fed. Uh, Benjamin Pincus, Ben Pincus, doing his cycling for the Fed. They raised thousands of pounds. And then Jessica Simons started a business off during the first lockdown and made sweatshirts as well, called, uh, what was it now, Herd Immunity, which was just amazing as well. And all the money she donated to charity as well. So these four youngsters have shone, they've been like stars in our community, bright shining stars, the sun's glaring into my eyes as well at the moment, type of star, but they really have been wonderful. So a hearty mazel tov to all four, to the families, and as the Rabonim tell us, the prayer makes a difference within the world and within our community, but doing acts of kindness and mitzvahs have a massive impact too. So go from strength to strength, and you will have an impact on not only this community, but the world at large as well. You make a major difference, a mazel tov to you and all your families. All the very best. A big hello to everybody at the Manchester Community Stars event. My name is Sydney Miller, and I'm honored to be JLGB's National Youth Representative. This has been a tough year, but we are proud to have helped so many children, young people and their families through our JLGB Virtual Positive Programming. None of this would have been possible without the help of some fantastic volunteers throughout the UK. But tonight I'd like to give a big shout out to two Manchester stars of JLGB Virtual. My fellow youth host, Adi Lambert, and to the brilliant Rachel Baker and her family for the amazing weekly arts, crafts and cooking sessions. Lots of other Manchester volunteers have helped behind the scenes as they do week in, week out of our local groups, which will be returning in May. Well done to all of tonight's stars and thank you so much for your continued support of JLGB for now over 125 years since we first began. We look forward to the next 125 years with a strong, vibrant Jewish Manchester partnership with JLGB. I'm nominating five people for the Community Stars Award. The first one is my parent governor, who is also my co-chair, Simon Taylor. He's the CEO of a large company and has two boys in my school. He is a very busy man, but not too busy to do fantastic work for the school. He has amazing solutions to the problems we have and organises the rest of the governing body and has recently done well in an Ofsted inspection. The next person I'm nominating is Nadia Myerson. She too is a parent governor and has two daughters in the school. She is our new wellbeing governor, looking after the wellbeing of all the, the teaching staff and the support staff. She's also chair of the PR committee alongside Barry Ross, who is also another parent governor that I've nominated. They've both been amazing with some fantastic ideas. They've done a promotional video for the school and Barry especially has been fantastic in the security side of the school. He works with the CST, does all the training and organise all the parent rotors to keep us safe. We have three, teacher gov three teachers that I've nominated. The first one is my deputy head. And Melanie Kobach, who's been in the school for 17 years. I've worked with her as the head teacher for 11 of those. She's an outstanding teacher, as loved by parents and children. She's always smiling. There is no job she won't do. She's got innovative ideas. She's creative. And she's also got fabulous solutions to some of the problems we encounter on a daily basis. She's really good at problem solving with the children and any fallings out, she sorts out. The second member of staff is Chloe Pereira. She's been teaching six years and she's been in the school as a, since a newly qualified teacher. She's in charge of years one, two and three 
and is my year five teacher. She's laughing and smiling and fun and has solutions when we're feeling sad to all sorts of problems that we've had. And she's an outstanding teacher. The children and parents adore her. And last but not least is Helen Powell Jones, my higher level teaching assistant, who's been in the school 10 years and worked with me also in my last school. The children adore her, the parents adore her. She's creative, she has some brilliant ideas. She's an amazing teacher. The school looks fantastic with all her innovative uh, artistic decor. And she's the nicest person. She's always, always smiling and you can hear her laughter as she comes down the corridor. Those are the five nominations for Berry and Whitefield Jewish Primary School. Thank you very much. Hi, I'm Charlotte and I'm Orly. And this year we raised money and collected food items for the homeless. We started our activism society when we were discussing the homeless and we were inspired to collect money and donations to distribute across Manchester. We contacted different shelters across Manchester and sent out emails to students and parents to bring in the essential items that they needed. This is a message for the pupils, staff, parents and governors of King David Primary School in Manchester. I would like to thank you all for being so very supportive over the last year or so during the COVID-19 pandemic. Everyone has been fantastic and adapted to the changes that we have had to put into place. You have adhered to the restrictions and altered routines to keep everyone as safe as possible. So a huge thank you to you from me and I'm sure you join me in looking forward to the future when we can return to some level of normality. Thank you. One Friday night, while sitting at a table with my wife, I came up with an idea wondering how can we connect the whole community whilst we aren't together. And I came up with the idea that we would film each other doing talents such as singing, cooking, arts and crafts, science experiments, and said, well, everyone likes making TikTok videos, so why can't we get the school to make videos which we show to each other? It ended up that I chose the pupil leadership team to be the presenters of this King TV project. They took this on with a great enthusiasm. They were presenting many episodes. We ended up making eight episodes in total, and we also had extra special ones throughout the year. And I want to say how amazing our children were in sending in their videos. We had hundreds and hundreds of videos sent in. They kept us going whilst we were dealing with a difficult time in the country. And thank you again to our parents and partners in the community who helped film our projects and helped take part in our work. However, I have to say the most important thank you to my colleagues at King David Primary School. Our staff took part in this project as well. They sent in their videos, giving up their valuable time as well to help entertain and keep our community going. Overall, I think KTV has been a really great success. So thank you very much to everyone. I really feel that KTV kept our King David community together because as the tagline says, this KTV was a show that kept you in the know. Well, you know, they say it's a cliche that the children are our future, but I think um, our children have shown tremendous resilience and backed by the educators and support groups, the schools, all the wonderful things that they've done to help our young people through the challenges of the pandemic. So we, uh, we say a huge congratulations to all of you for, uh, for all the work you have done. Now, speaking of the pandemic, it has, of course, had a, a huge impact on mental health. Uh, we've probably all seen the statistics of the number of people who are feeling, really feeling um, the, the negative impacts of, uh, of the restrictions and all the implications of lockdown. So in this next section, we're going to look at some of the organisations and some of the groups who have done their best to help boy and and keep um, people sort of on balance with aspects of mental health, um, perhaps through promoting the vaccine, perhaps through meeting groups, perhaps through um, just being there to offer counselling and support. So if you wouldn't mind just taking a look. Hi, I'm Shalamit and I'm the social prescriber for Nashama, which is the mental health befriending charity in Manchester. 
During lockdown, I was very privileged to be involved in delivering social prescribing activities. Um, this ranged from art sessions and having art packs delivered to your doorstep to cooking cook along evenings um, where ingredients were delivered to people's doorsteps and bringing people together in this way um, very much brought out that loneliness is not about being alone and togetherness, kindness, plus a cup of tea and a good piece of chocolate can make all the difference to our mental health. So if anyone is interested in coming on board or knows of anyone who could benefit from Neshama, please do have a look at our website, which is www.neshama.co.uk. Thank you. I've nominated Kate Lurie. JAM is Jewish Action for Mental Health and they offer counselling. They, at the, the last year for lockdown, they've offered a huge amount of Zoom sessions for people like myself who just needed to connect with people and have fun and, and feel some sort of connection. And I do know that they've offered huge amounts of counselling for people. Kate cares. Kate cares about everybody and everything. I've known Kate for about 15 years and even before JAM, she was always involved in communal activity in the, in the Jewish community, outside the Jewish community, environmental issues. If something needs doing, Kate will be there, she'll do it, and she'll do it with her heart, and she cares about everybody and everything. Kate deserves to be recognised for this work. She looks after everybody else and has done for many years, and I think it's time for her to get recognition for, for her care and commitment and for the great person that she is. I'd like to thank a number of people who have really helped make JAM into the success it is, especially over the past year. Um, my first thanks go to two anonymous funders who really helped set JAM up from the start. They know who they are and we're really, really grateful to them. I'd also like to give a special mention to Phyllis Alden. She is a clinical psychologist in the community who has given her time freely to offer peer supervision to our wonderful family of qualified and accredited therapists and counsellors who work for JAM. Thank you, Phyllis, for all your input. I'd like to thank our amazing team of volunteers as well, who are out there every week, collecting, delivering, organising, particularly organ delivering art supplies, chocolate supplies, whatever we need to run our amazing and fantastic workshops. And um, I'd also like to thank the people behind the scenes who help make JAM the success it is, the trustees who give willingly of their time as well. So a huge thanks to all the people, all those unsung heroes behind the scenes who volunteered to make JAM the success it is. It started with a tragedy, but when hundreds turned up at our inaugural meeting, we knew that so much more had to be done. We realised that there was a real need to provide a one-stop shop for people who have mental health issues, some of which are very serious. We ran many educational events until the pandemic hit in March 2020. Since then, we have offered free counselling or therapy to over 180 people in the Manchester Jewish community. And the need is getting bigger and bigger. I'm proud to support the amazing work JAM does in our community. I can see the difference it makes to people's lives. I deliver art packages to people who are isolating, who then connect on Zoom to create something with the wonderful artists have and hopefully make them feel uh, less alone. Hava's art sessions are really the highlight of my week. They really boost my mood. They've been incredibly helpful, something to look forward to and uh, really helped with my um, mental health. Thank you, Jam. And carry on the great work supporting the community. They have created a safe space in Greater Manchester for all Jewish people, no matter what community they associate themselves with. Jams are a compassionate organisation who have one goal in mind, and that is to help people. It's an absolute amazing organisation. They have fun activities for kids, like making colours and chocolate lollies. With our one-to-one -one and group activities, JAM is improving people's mood and, quite literally, saving people's lives.
I'm absolutely thrilled to have been nominated uh, for the work of Salford Healthy Communities. So I'm here representing the whole team. Uh, we're working to uh, bring awareness of health screening, uh, cancer screening, NHS health checks, which will hopefully soon come back on board. And more recently, we've been doing a lot of work about giving information about coronavirus and promoting the vaccines for the virus. Um, I'm co-chair of Salford Healthy Communities. I'm also a semi-retired GP and a nutritionist. Uh, so I head up the team. Um, I've been involved in some campaigns we've had. I've brought along a mask. We did a campaign, uh, Spread Mitzvot, Not Covid, giving out free masks. And um, I've done some talking about how your diet can help improve your immunity. Um, we've also had various messages on mental health, uh, various notices in the newspapers, and we've had translations into Yiddish to make sure that everybody can be aware of those messages. I've brought along my cookery book, which is under my other name, Dr. Jackie Rose. Uh, I've brought this out together with my cousin Judy Rose and it's just promoting healthy lifestyle and healthy eating. So what I did during the pandemic was put out over social media um, programs that will either directly from me help them or I introduced uh, world-class psychologists, authors and researchers um, to hand over their information to, to the people that we're watching. So I'm passionate, first of all, about my own community here in Manchester, but it, because it was on social media, we managed to meet uh, a lot of people from all over the world, actually, including Israel. Um, and the idea was that during this pandemic, people were really suffering, didn't really know how to respond to it properly. And so I brought in either professionals or I gave over myself uh, through different social media and Zoom uh, uh, meetings how to how we're going to get through this. Our hope is that people got a lot out of it. Uh, first of all, sense of community and togetherness, which is really important when people are going through a kind of a crisis like this. But practical information on how to deal with it um, and deal with those inner events that we have, our thoughts, our, our body sensations, our emotions, which sometimes get a little bit out of control and people feel a bit of an overwhelm. So it was to deal with that as well. So it's a big honour to be nominated for it. It's a surprise too, and uh, I'm happy to be involved. A big thank you then to all of those who have been absolutely indefatigable in supporting the community in terms of our general health, mental health, welfare, uh, very deservedly so that they should be recognised for all they do. And remember, we are a community, so do get involved in the conversation. And, you know, if you can, show your appreciation for all the people that we're celebrating this evening, perhaps with emojis, the, the clapping, the hearts, all those kind of things. And, um, you know, drop into the chat room, tell us what you're thinking, so if you like my shirt. Um, but more importantly, just tell us how much you um, appreciate and uh, all the people that we're, uh, as I say, celebrating this evening because they will be so thrilled to know a lot of them are unsung heroes and, you know, were blushing a little when they were nominated. But we are absolutely unashamed in saying thank you for everything that you do. Really, really fantastic work. OK, moving swiftly on. Let's talk shul, shall we? Yeah, shul meetings. No, no, no. We're not going to celebrate shul meetings, but we are going to celebrate the work of shuls in our community. And of course, the centre of most Jewish communities is the shul. And no, no, the nowhere was this more true than during the pandemic. Yes, yeah, sorry, the P word again. Um, so many shuls had to sort of look to themselves and think, how can we reach out to our members, to our community, help them and support them in these unprecedented times? Um, so there were everything from regular Zoom meetings, discussions, constant communications, reaching out to vulnerable members of the shuls. Um, and there were many examples, really, so many examples of how shuls responded to, to what the community and their congregational needs were during the pandemic, um, especially those who maybe, you know, used to get comfort from going to shul, but, you know, suddenly no longer being able to see people regularly going to shul. There were so many ways in which our, our shuls should really be proud of themselves for the way they offered comfort during these difficult times uh, and gave the reassurance that so many people needed. So come and take a look. Hi, I'm Rabbi Robin Ashworth-Steen from Manchester Reform Synagogue and I'm nominating, um, along with my community, Joyce Walkden Goodman 
Thank you, Joyce, for everything you have done during lockdown. Usually in our community, you are a weaver of community. You bring and welcome people in wherever you go. During lockdown, you have stepped this up and really ensured that we continue to be a welcoming, inclusive space. The two things I'm going to note, although you've done so much more, is keeping a space called Connect Time going each week, ensuring that members of our community, new and regular, can come together to meet each other and talk through difficult topics and also have a laugh and a drink as well. It's really valuable and priceless. And the second thing that I so appreciate and so many of our families do is the bereavement care team that you are holding, leading and that you set up during this pandemic. Your leadership have ensured that bereaved families have received Shabbat care packages, that they've had uh, dedicated people within the community to support them along with the rabbis and the staff. You've been there in the cemetery in all weather to support um, the rabbi leading and the family to make sure it's COVID safe but also that the community is supporting those who are bereaved um, and you've created a team around you bringing people in and updating us um, as a community into the 21st century. Joyce you are a true star, thank you so much for all that you do. I'm proposing Hannah Bank as my star because in 2019, in November on a wet, cold winter day, Hannah and her husband, Rabbi Greg, arrived from a sunny summer Johannesburg. Instantly, she attended one of our liaison meetings where we were discussing what to do, how to do it, vis a vis um, thinking the people in the community, which is a well established group which we have been running for years. She came with enthusiasm, encouragement, a listening ear, and contributions, which she has done ever since. Initially in person, although I wasn't there, and subsequently on Zoom. As COVID and lockdown has progressed, she undertook to phone all the individually listed people in our show and to empathise and listen to them. She supported her husband in his Kabbalah Shabbat and Havdalah. The music was wonderful, and she has taught also during the week of Hebrew and Jewish studies. By delivering her halot to people all over our community, near and far, and by initiating the delivery of gifts at Purim, she has brought together the community from outlying areas, shul goers, non shul goers, young and old. I feel able to say all this as I have never met, due to circumstance and COVID, either Hannah or Greg face to face. And so for me, Hannah's maintaining and creating this community, Hannah is my favourite star. My name is Anita Isaacson. I have nominated Sonia Curtis for a Community Star Award. At the beginning of lockdown, Sonia formed a WhatsApp group for the Berry Ladies Kiddish Rota. Every day we get messages of support, jokes, cartoons, puzzles, and every Friday beautiful Shabbat Shalom greetings. Quizzes are organised and marked by Sonia. These are great fun and entertaining, and have helped pass the time and raise the spirits, especially for those ladies shielding or in isolation. Sonia also wishes those with your sight long life and happy birthday or mazel tov from the Simcha. Without this daily contact, lockdown would have been a difficult and lonely time for some of our members, and we feel Sonia deserves to be nominated and win a Community Star Award. Last year, Sonia lost her mother and mother-in-law to COVID, and in March this year, very sadly, her younger sister passed away, also from COVID. Even though Sonia has experienced deep sadness, she has found the strength to keep us all going and we owe her a great deal of thanks and love. First and foremost, I'd like to thank all those that nominated me for this award. 
It's really appreciated. It's great to have people like you. When lockdown began over a year ago, we realized it had to be a complete paradigm shift in our focus. Whereas in the past, many of our events focused on the individual, it was now time to think about the community. And immediately when lockdown began, we made sure that a team of volunteers called every single member who was in the vulnerable category to make sure they had what they needed for the challenging times. The, the focus of our bar and bat, bar and bat mitzvah programs changed to make sure they looked after those who lived around them. They made things like cheesecakes, origami, flower cards, tubishvat, um, they did balloon modeling, all things to give to others in the community to connect the generations. We used platforms like Zoom to allow people to share their experiences. We had TED Talks where people shared charity work they were doing, how to cope with lockdown. We've had minion rotors. We've had all sorts of programs and events with the focus being beyond the walls of the shul, how we as a community can do things together and look after each other. I'd like to thank everyone at the Rep Council for putting on this award, and I'm really delighted to have been nominated for helping and caring during COVID in the community. All the best, wishing everyone a fantastic day. Uh, we realized early on that we've all got to pull together, we've got to try and keep the community together so we started off with initially some Zoom services, but then uh, our youth team uh, organised the children to make phone calls to the elderly people and even to help them with shopping, things like that, just day to day little things. And then we started off gradually with different Zoom programming. We started off with uh, Tuesday tea day where we used to have a Monday club where they'd meet once a month but obviously we couldn't do that so people would come on a Tuesday afternoon for a cup of tea that's now grown every week to over 80 people. Um, I, I feel that the the shul and, and the shul leadership and let's not forget the congregation themselves um, without them this wouldn't work so I, think, I feel that we've all helped each other throughout this period and we've really stepped up to the to the challenge. And it's really only at this, this time, and funnily enough, a time where we can't actually physically go into Shul was where we felt that we needed Shul the most and that our community really pulled together. Um, so we're hoping that's something that we'll endure, but we're really um, proud of, of the people um, that form our community for engaging and for volunteering in the way that they have. So many people have done so much for, for everybody in North Manchester because this has had a, a ripple effect and it's gone out to other congregations as well. I think if I can also come in that one of the, the things that I've noticed is people who really haven't played a huge role in organising different activities have suddenly come on board and have started organising and have been and have been there and have wanted to help. As I always say, there's there's no I in team, and it really has for the sure. It's been a real teamwork effort. My name's Sharon Coppedge, and together with my husband Gary, we started and have been coordinating the COVID support group at Menorah Synagogue. We'd like to thank Eve Davidson for nominating the group which has been made up of over 75 volunteers from across the Menorah community. We've been aiming to support the Menorah community during the pandemic. We've been making telephone calls on a regular basis, particularly to members who are older, shielding or self-isolating, or indeed those who live alone. And we do practical tasks such as buying shopping, delivering it, picking up medications, and on one memorable occasion, even going to change somebody's SIM card when they got a new mobile phone. We've done things for all the festivals. We have bought matzah in bulk and delivered it to people. Sadly, we've now done that twice. Uh, we've delivered gifts for Rosh Hashanah and Hanukkah, activity packs for children. Uh, and we have also had a group of people who have been sewing masks, which again, the volunteer group has picked up and delivered out to anybody who needed it. It's been fantastic to see the group coming together and we really hope that this nomination helps to show the appreciation that we have and the synagogue and community as a whole have. Thank you very much for everything you've done. Bowden Shules are a very warm and very welcoming community and many of us have endeavoured to keep things going 
during this very difficult time of the pandemic. We've been fortunate enough to have instigated for us a lot of unusual things and one of the earliest uh, rotors was a buddy system whereby we contact many many lonely people and we keep in touch with them by phone sometimes we meet them outside we drop a cake round we've made use of video a lot the zoom particularly um, we have Monday morning being able when when we're allowed at the rabbi's garden just for people to pop by for a drink be it in the street or in the garden depending on government restrictions it's very important at this time that people are supported people are shopped for collect prescriptions may be collected just to make sure that everybody is cared for and i hope that i've done a very little bit to that i feel very lucky it all started off some years ago when the men decided they would have a discussion group and when we asked if we could join oh, they were adamant no no this is a male thing so we set up our own unfortunately when the pandemic struck there were some people who were not technologically savvy so we have lost a few but having said that We've gained a few from other shawls, from other ladies. We, uh, as Janet said, we lost a few uh, people who either don't like Zoom or can't do Zoom. But we have many other people joining us. That one of the benefits of Zoom being that people can join in from North Manchester, from Cheadle, and even two of our ladies who went to live in London have now started to join us, which is great. Um, we discussed various um topics topics <laughs> various topics and um also we certainly at the beginning we tended to act as a support group uh, and gave out information to one another about where there were supermarket slots or who would deliver to you uh, but obviously things have moved on um we've also arranged quizzes another session where the uh, ladies who wish to wore hats pre to and generally we make our la ladies feel very welcome and a lot of people have said that certainly in the beginning it was the highlight of um, their week. So that's us, Bowden Ladies Discussion Group. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Well, you got to say three cheers for the shuls. They've really excelled themselves during the pandemic, really, really doing they, what they can to reach out to uh, to their members and uh, and make life a little easier for them. And of course, during the pandemic, um, time when people were shielding, were cut off from um, from others, were feeling vulnerable, perhaps they were too afraid to leave the home or were told not to leave home. This is when really our, our many communal organisations had to step up and think, well, how can we reach out and what can we do to make people feel connected, to make sure that they're not scared and to, de and to deliver the, uh, the services that they need. We're going to take a look at that now. And by the way, I just want to tell you, apart from my tripping up tonight, um, is that um, there's uh, been a few hiccups technically. The gremlins have just been out and about. And we can't do anything about them, unfortunately. Um, but uh, if there's any mix up with any names or things that have appeared on screen, we apologise now and we want to say a big thank you to all of you for uh, for taking part this evening and, and apologies if uh, any sort of little grammatical errors have, uh, have crept in here and there. Let's take a look at the communal organisations. Hello, my name is Denise Girono and I run the WHC Kettle Catcher. I'd like to thank my nominees Lisa and Beth and my motivator Michelle. At the beginning of the first not lockdown, I noticed people spilling out into the streets and realised that it wasn't just for fresh air and exercise. It was also so that they could see someone and have a chat. What happens after their 30 minute walk, I wondered? And what happens to those who can't even get out? Under the auspices of WHC, I started a weekly Zoom session where participants make a cuppa and sit down to join others for a chat. I send out a personalised message the night before and if my regulars don't turn up, I contact them and check they're okay. I love nothing more than seeing smiling faces on the screen. 
And if you see this and fancy joining us, please get in touch. It's free. You don't need to worry about what to wear or even where to park. At Jewish Women's Aid, we always refer to our volunteers as the lifeblood of the organisation and none more so than our helpliners. We experienced a surge of calls and a huge increase in demand during the pandemic and our volunteer helpliners were at the forefront of, of our response. They were the first people to pick up the phone to women who quite often were talking about the abuse they'd experienced for the very first time ever. They offered a listening ear, they believed, they supported, they referred those women to our services internally and they were our first response. We are so grateful to them for their dedication, for their commitment and their time. Thank you so much from me, from the team at Jewish Women's Aid and also from the women themselves who are so grateful for your support. Uh, I do quite a few things but um, lately a lot of knitting. Um, I'm a member of the Big Knit Group and we work together with the League producing uh, thousands of garments every year that we donate into the community. And we donate to hospitals, nursing homes, premature baby units, um, anything that you can think of that's knitted and crochet that we can give to the community. Um, recently, since um, Mitzvah Day, which was last November, we, we were in lockdown and we were un unable to do the things we normally do. Uh, however, I have a very uh, garage that's very easily accessible, we made it very safe, we collected goods for Mitzvah Day, we had members come in to pack bags, we, we sent out to care homes, I think it was the staff, the staff at care homes, and we did a great job. Everybody was very happy to see one another, all socially distanced, and that was a good experiment because then we were approached by Chabad, and they asked us if we could help to pack Purim bags, uh, which we did, hundreds. Uh, again, we called, called for help, we got the help we needed, um, we organised it, the, the goods were delivered to my house, the uh, garage was open, um, everybody was very happy again to take part. We did the deliveries, which went to care homes, and we helped Chabad with their one-to-one uh, -one deliveries to homes, uh, individual homes. And we did such a great job that they contacted us again at Pesach, we did the same again, and we're going to be doing Shavuot as well, which is coming up in a week or two. Within the League of Jewish Women, we're a national organisation and we had a call from um, head office in London asking for help with twiddle muffs. Twiddle muffs are items that are made for people with dementia. It's a hand muff knitted and we sew on buttons and bells and bows and things that people can twiddle. And they had knitted these but they hadn't put on the twiddles. So they got sent up here to Manchester. I collected them all and gathered the League women together and we sold all the twiddles and bobbles and everything on it and sent it back to London. One of the things that we've been able to do during lockdown are the helplines. So Care Concern, which is a bereavement counselling service, has been able to function. I believe they've been doing really well. Also Association of Jewish Refugees. We have uh, members who, again, befriend and have their own um, clients. Uh, also, uh, we have one member that does Silver Line, which is the Esther Ranson uh, helpline. She's been working throughout the lockdown, so that's been able to keep going. Here at the NICU, we sadly had to shut the doors to our members last March, the 17th of March, just the week before the national lockdown. And since then, we have been making sure that we've kept in touch with all our members, making phone calls either with a team of volunteers that we've used or our own staff members. The Meals on Wheels, which was um, greatly used since the um, lockdown, because obviously people used to come in here and have a hot meal, and they've been unable to do that. So the Meals on Wheels had increased twofold, at least um, after lockdown. We're also supporting the Jewish Soup Kitchen, who've been unable to access their kitchen. So we have been supplying them with meals as well through our caterer. We've also tried to, where people are able to use it, we have provided them with um, laptops and iPads for which we've had some funding for, activity packs which we were able to get hold of and we've just felt it very important to, to keep in touch with people and just that even one or two phone calls a week has just meant so much to everyone. The volunteers, we couldn't manage without the volunteers. We reckon in a normal year we probably have an average 10,000 hours a year, volunteer hours here at the NICI. Uh, since, the, since lockdown they've been keeping in touch with people, delivering the Meals on Wheels, um, 
hopefully we're going to reopen in a, in a couple of weeks in mid-May and the volunteers are going to be more important than ever. Um, they're going to be running the art room and the art activities, all the different activities we do, our convenience shop and the front desk, which they're, they're the first people first people that our members see when they come in, meet and greet, a friendly face and a smile and familiarity. So the, the recognition of this award to our volunteers here at the Nikki Alliance Centre will just be another rec recognition to them of all the hard work that they've done throughout the year. Not that they want thanks because all our volunteers get out of it as much as they give and they really really enjoy it here and they have missed it and we're keeping in touch also regularly with our volunteers on a regular Zoom meeting which is important. This is Sammy from BBYO. We want to say a massive thank you to everyone who has helped us during Covid and to everyone else who has been in the same situation as us. We are so excited to welcome back old and new members to BBYO and we just want to say that we can't wait to meet everyone again and be back in person and really start the year with amazing memories and I think the group started with the aim for knitting and sewing but it's rapidly become a social group um, and during lockdown we've tried to keep in touch by phone calls, those that are on WhatsApp um, and one lady who joined very late, who was reluctant to knit because she didn't think she could do it anymore, she said it's been a lifetime knitting. Well, we started off with a project for the shawl. That was the, the first thing that we did. And we, we did a hanging, it hanging on the wall in the shawl corridor. And then we've done, we went on, we made poppies, um, a display for the also for the shawl and then subsequently for the Berry Berry Veterans, Veterans, Veterans for Remembrance Sunday. Although it wasn't the original intention, it's been really good that we've been able to go and do things for so many projects we've done for the Children's Hospital, the with baby hats and the Prem Babies. The Prem Babies. We, we did hearts for patients in hospital. We did fidget toys. We did octopuses. Baby, yes, we did these octopuses. These are for prim babies. They, they're... <laughs> and then we made up um, a miniature one as a fidget toy and they went to Tommy Lev School and a non-Jewish school that's got an autistic centre. I think to have the work recognised is sort of fantastic because you just do your little bit and we enjoy it. Um, we do. I do it for pleasure as well as knowing it's contributing to a good cause, but it is for pleasure also. So it's a win-win situation. And it's... Hi, I'm Esty Brooke. And I'm Aaron Lowe. And we would like to say a massive thank you to everyone who has nominated us for this Community Stars Award. It's been a challenging time this past year, but we have worked in overdrive to make sure that all of our members have been able to stay connected have fun with friends and have been supported in every single possible way. One of the things that we have learned from the past 14 months is the power of friendship and what incredible things can happen when people come together to support each other. With the help of our incredible volunteers, the Friendship Circle family have come out of this stronger and more unified than ever before. Thanks again for the nominations, it means so much to us. Hello, I'm Jonathan. Our son Adam has been a member of the Friendship Circle for a number of years and I think they're absolutely wonderful. I want to tell you today how good they really are. Pre-Covid, they've allowed them to go out on day trips, they've provided Friday night hosted dinners and all sorts of events so that our son and his friend are feel part of the community. It's so important to them and they do look forward to the events. During Covid, they have excelled themselves. Providing Zoom, they've had a weekly program where they've incorporated so many things, even though they couldn't get together, it's been quizzes and singing and art club and hollow bakes and all the things that they've needed, they've provided. It's just been absolutely wonderful, a true lifeline to us and, and to our son. And we really appreciate everything they do. I think that 
anyone who can help the Friendship Circle should do so. And I'd like to, to really say that if you can, please do, as Adam and all his friends would really appreciate it. Thank you so much indeed. Hi, I'm here with Michelle Salon, who nominated myself and my wife, Elise Aldman, for this award. And you guys run Our Deli in Hale Barnes, which is a new and very loved kosher deli. The reason I nominated them is to say a massive thank you for the fact that not only did they stay open throughout the pandemic, but they made sure that the whole community, including those who are elderly, vulnerable and shielding, were able to receive kosher food. They made sure that people were able to have their food delivered. They enlisted the help of volunteers and they even went so far as to make sure that everyone could get kosher for Pesach food and have it delivered to their doors this year. Um, it was also a massive thank you to Richard and Elise's daughters, Anya and Harper, who gave so much of themselves to make sure that the deli was still able to stay open. It's been a huge family sacrifice and we're all, all of us in Hale are incredibly grateful. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. <laughs> As the leading Jewish social care charity in Manchester, uh, we're going to take a lead on this. Together we will pull through this. The fair is on the front lines of COVID-19 and we are witnessing amazing selflessness, dedication and commitment. I am so proud of what you are doing, the spirit in which you are doing it and everything that you are achieving. Uh, the Fed do some fantastic work in the community and this is me doing my bit uh, to support them. It's time to shave my head for the Fed. I think that the work that the Fed does is absolutely amazing, although I always did, but now I've seen it for myself. <laughs> I am so proud to be leading such a dedicated team of staff who courageously put themselves on the front line every day to keep our most treasured community members safe. Our community teams are helping hundreds of lonely and isolated individuals, keeping them safe, keeping them connected. So thank you to all of our incredible staff and amazing volunteers. Thank you as well for the many spontaneous acts of kindness that we've seen in recent weeks from so many people. looking forward to care for the people as much as I can and for, till the point I can, I've been with you. Sending their love from a locked down care home. On this strangest of Mother's Days, families are having to stay in touch online. We're going to clap for the staff now. Right, can you all hear me there? I'd like you to join in and clap for the staff. We are all here to support you. Doesn't matter what you need, if you need shopping, if you just need something picking up, please give us a call. Oh wow, that's brilliant. And, and how is it being able to see your sister now and, and to be so close and chat through the it's window? A, it is wonderful, uh, absolutely. And the way that they've organized it here is really something to admire. What do you think about having the vaccine? Well, I think it was very excellent because it's certainly far better than having an illness. And please God, it should be better. We're hoping with a very, very large page. On behalf of everybody in Greater Manchester, to all of those people who support the Fed to make it the amazing organisation that it is, a huge thank you. In a year like no other, as Andy has just said, we owe an incredible debt of gratitude to our wonderful supporters, our donors, our volunteers, our individual fundraisers, who were with us on every step of this harrowing journey, and who alongside our heroic staff ensured that thousands of Jewish people in our community who required support and help received it. For over 150 years, the Fed has been the golden thread running through our community, providing support for those most in need and vulnerable, and never more so than during COVID. 
We provided over 1,200 instances of help for people with mental health issues. We gave over 26,500 hours of volunteering. We had over 3,500 calls to our helpline asking for advice and support. We supported over 30 Holocaust survivors, helped over 40 women suffering from domestic abuse and violence, delivered over 1,500 vital food parcels, and helped people claim over £120,000 of benefits they would not normally have been able to access. The Fed is the community safety net. We provide life-enhancing and often life-saving support, and if we do not do what we do, people in our community, Jewish people, will suffer and in some cases die. So thank you so much for all your help, for all your support, for all your time. We need it now more than ever, and we are very, very grateful for it. Thank you. It's important to bring the news from the Jewish Telegraph to the community, um, especially those, like Paul has said, who may be housebound. Um, usually our recipients have sight loss or are, have the inability to turn pages. So um, very important to bring what's happening locally to them. The role of the talking newspaper has been even more important during the pandemic. So many people have been housebound, unable to go out and buy their Jewish Telegraph. So at least this was a way of bringing the paper into people's homes. When I heard during the pandemic that the team who recorded were unable to do so because of social distancing, etc., I immediately offered my services and for two months recorded it personally, very, very often at three or four o'clock in the morning after I'd finished work. I just felt it was really, really important that the news was brought to people who would not otherwise have been able to receive it. I decided to nominate the Northern Jewish Talking Newspaper for this award. Um, I'm very proud of our volunteers. Sadly, it's greatly re we are greatly reduced during the time of the pandemic. Our studio is a very small room and only two safely permitted in there. So instead of having all the rotors, all the different people doing their rotors, we're down to a technician and a reader. And thankfully, we're getting the paper out. I, I think it um, brings something to those who may be lonely. They feel they're communicating directly with a person rather than reading it off a printed page. So during this evening, we've seen the work of some incredible organizations, schools, groups, schools, all working together to, uh, to help the community in any which way that they can, vulnerable people, those in need, reaching out whichever way they are able to do so. But you don't have to be part of an organization to do wonderful things for the community, to volunteer and to put yourself out there and help people who are in need. And uh, sometimes it, it's harder as an individual um, and yet, um, you know, people will still go out there without needing to affiliate themselves with a particular group and will just act on their own initiative to do things to help others. So for this final section of nominees this evening, we're going to now look at and of course celebrate um, some of the individuals and some of the work they've done. Take a look at some of their stories. I'm here to talk about the lady that I nominated. I had never met Adele until last March, April, when we first went into lockdown for the first time. And if you remember, the weather was glorious. I was walking up and down my garden on a lovely Sunday, day, and this young lady appeared near the fence. And she said, you don't know me, but I live five doors away from you, and I know you're by yourself. And I just want to say that I shop quite frequently and if there's ever anything you need, here is my mobile telephone number. And she handed me a piece of paper with a number on it. And that was the first time I'd ever met her. And I think, although it's a very one-sided business, because she does all the giving and I do all the taking, um, I think we've become good friends yeah, since good then. Yeah. I mean, she now has my door key. And I know that if I need her, I can just ring and she'll come running across. Well, I, I, she's one of the most giving of people that I know. She's always happy to do things for people and, and she does it without any need for praise or anything. She's, she's a friendly, kind, um, 
What's the word, best word to describe her? I don't know. Why did you feel that you wanted to do this for Joyce? I just felt that because we were all in lockdown, I knew at, at her age, she probably wouldn't want to go to the shops at all. And I didn't know if she had any family in Manchester, but later I found out she did, that how was she going to get any shopping done? I didn't, because I was struggling to get slots for, for deliveries and I was worried that she wouldn't be able to get any shopping done. So I just saw her in the garden, I ran over and thought, I'd just ask her if she needed anything. And do you consider yourself friends now? Yes, yes we certainly do. <laughs> and she, she says she doesn't do anything, but whenever I have an issue, I go over and chat to her and she works it out for me. So she's, in, in, in another way, she's helping me with, with things. Uh, being an artist um, during lockdown, uh, being passionate about delivering um, art to the community, um, I've had to um, shift and move and recreate all the workshops on uh, online, on Zoom. Um, so I had to uh, think and being she I've been shielding myself, so I had to rethink how can I reach out to people without actually being with them, which was a new concept. I never thought you could actually deliver an art session or a creative session without being with people in the same room. Um, but I've started by uh, creating art packs, which we send out, um, I send out to individuals in their homes. And then on the Zoom sessions, um, we delivered the session and created things together. Uh, it was challenging in the beginning because it was a new concept, you know, and I'm a very sort of tactile, touchy-feely person and working with a lot of elderly, uh, which were shielding and lonely. It was a big challenge, a technical challenge for them. Um, so it took a bit of time. Um, I think uh, one of the things I think is desperation, which forced, and I think it's a positive thing, fo forced a lot of elderly to become tech savvy, savvy um, which was always amazed me. And one of the people that really amazes me is stroke patients, which have managed to communicate and create beautiful art through Zoom, which was something I could never imagine they would be able to do before lockdown. So uh, yeah, my middle son, uh, Rafi, calls me a hero without a cape, which makes me laugh because I don't really feel like a hero. Um, I just feel like I try to utilize my abilities to benefit the community. Well, the reason I'm here is to nominate the Herskovitz family. The Herskovitz family have been absolutely over the moon to, for me. I had a phone call very, from a little boy and one of the little Herskovitz, Sammy Herskovitz, about nine years of age, and he said, I'm your buddy, how can I help you? And I just emoted. It was something so special. And he came to see us because we were in isolation for 12 months. And they did, went over the, over the moon what they did. I met Charlie, I met Mummy Vicky, Daddy, Gary, and they all came round and they gave me so much strength and so much help. They did some shopping, they talked to us, told us jokes, anything we wanted, they were there at the other end of the phone. And um, they also weekly phone calls. The problem of uh, my illnesses and uh, medical uh, problems, I was told by the NHS that I have to stay in for three months, and it went for six months and nine months and 12 months. They're a genuine family who have love for other people and will sacrifice themselves and have bought, instilled in their children the right way of doing things. Something very, very special. If I could give them a hug, they would have the biggest hug in the world from me. Thank you for allowing me the opportunity to nominate my wife, Linda Price. The expression Isha Nadiva describes somebody who is charitable, generous and kind-hearted, giving of herself without seeking recognition or reward. This is the best way I can describe my wife Linda to you. Thank you. I came back from a tour of Morocco in March last year and we got thrown into the deep end. Um, I sprung into emergency mode. I said, how can I help? I saw people advertising to volunteering. I said, let's go out there. There are people that need us, we're going to go out there and help them. So what I do, I do a lot of networking because I have a lot of contacts in various communities all over the world. I decided to step in. I saw there was a niche, there was a need within the community. A friend uh, reached out to me and I said, let's take this WhatsApp group, 
provide the community with a service, networking, a little bit like journalism on a social media platform and it worked really well. There was a need throughout the pandemic to feed information to the community. No scaremongering, purely factual help out and it's proven to be really good. Um, Freilich is an organisation started by a number of friends of mine. Um, they go to hospitals, bedsides, um, nursing homes and sick people at home, uh, singing, cheering them up. There's a group of about 40 of them. I'm one of the volunteers. Um, we get a message, we go out there. It's proven to change people's lives. They're going through hard times. Step in there, help out as much as we can. Obviously, volunteering hasn't started with the pandemic. I've been involved in many organisations pre-pandemic and still involved in them. One example would be the animal therapy farm, where we have, um, as some of you might know, animal therapy is where humans can bond with animals in a non-judgmental way. It's a therapy that is proving to work really, really well. We're going to bring this to the community. We've just purchased the farm and hopefully we're going to make something really big out of this. So I was lucky, I was brought up in a family where we were taught automatically that you give. I have an uncle in London who has an open house and he taught me everything is about a gold heart. If you have the opportunity, jump at it, you be flexible. God gives you the time. It's like giving charity. Instead of putting your name on a building, I've donated this building. Take 10% of your time, give it away, give it to people out there that need it. You have the skills, you have the leadership ability, do it. God has given you that, use it and use it well. Thank you. So my role in the Jewish Leadership Council is as one of their external affairs managers. It's my job to speak with politicians of all different uh, stripes and engage with them about key issues that affect the Jewish community. I love my job because I'm passionate about my community. I've been, uh, I grew up in Manchester, I've lived here all my life and it is a source of great pride to not just myself but also my family that I can be so active in representing not just the community here in Manchester but our key communal organisations as well with the very highest levels of government. Since the Covid pandemic struck we have had the most phenomenal response in, uh, in Greater Manchester to to, to what has been an incredibly difficult uh, situation and the role of volunteers in that has been critical since day one. So we created a strategic group which brought together our whole diverse community. Um, it now has 46 organisations represented from our whole community um, including uh, MPs and leaders of councils and CCGs and Critical, critical, a critical importance to the group is that of is a role of volunteers because quite a lot of the people who attend and give their time and energy and dedication and passion are people who are volunteers and not paid professionals and it's really important to uh, to note their contribution to ensuring the needy and vulnerable in our community are cared for. I feel uh, incredibly privileged and honoured to be nominated for this award. You know, working tirelessly for the community, it's nice to have that recognition that people are aware of what, not just myself, but all the other nominees are, have given their own time and commitment and dedication in ensuring that the community has what they need as we start to come out from this dreadful last 12 months or so. Perfect. Hello everybody, I'm Maxine Warner. And I'm Brian Warner. And uh, people will probably know us better from the Lemon Tree Function Band, where we entertained uh, all over uh, the UK, Europe, and uh, with our band. And we've been doing fabulous shows in our close. And um... well, we just really wanted to lift the spirits uh, of all our neighbours and the community and beyond uh, with our uh, outdoor shows and our Zoom shows, um, which were called From Pop to Opera. And we've been doing also, after our, our show, everybody brought out their table and chairs, the garden table and chairs, and put them in the front. And we do a one hour show, and after the show, everyone would have a cup of tea or a glass of wine. And then we'd either do um, a little bit of a quiz, or we'd do bingo. And it just lifted the spirits of all our neighbours. It was absolutely fabulous. And we even organised a Hamilton's Got Talent show where uh, all our neighbours did something uh, as well. <laughs> it was um, fabulous. And then we got calls from other roads in Prestwich asking if they could come and watch the shows as well. So uh, they ended up bringing their chairs, putting them in the road, socially distance, and, uh, and they watched as well. 
that's uh, about it, isn't it, really? It is. It's all about making people smile. Yeah. So with that, I'll say bye-bye. We can't wait to get back, really, back on stage and uh, with our charity shows and uh, entertaining, putting people's uh, put smiles on people's faces and bringing happiness to everyone. Take care. And you. Stay bye. safe. Take care. Bye. I, we moved from Liverpool to Manchester in February 2020 and I was fortunate enough to gain the position of Regional Manager for the Board of Deputies of British Jews. The full title of the post was the Regional Coronavirus Advice Capacity Help Manager, which goes down to the acronym of COACH, COACH in Hebrew meaning strength. So I was offering the strength to our regional Jewish communities. Um, so anything about, so as the, as the government guidelines changed, I ensured that all our Jewish communities were up to date with them. They knew them if they needed any help and assistance, you know, especially with opening up of the synagogues as well. So we, I offered a little bit of help there and stuff. So just making sure that they were on top of everything going on regarding COVID. Yes, in my copious spare time, uh -huh, um, I was a telephone befriender and I also do shopping um, just once a fortnight. Um, and it, it's nice, it gives, it gives the person, um, the lady that I shop for, um, we have a little chat as well, so I ensure that she's okay and she looks forward to my phone calls as well when I ask her for her shopping list. Volunteering is, is so important, it doesn't take up much time. You know, I do one phone call a week um, to, to my shopper now, it's a couple of minutes and I do my shopping. First of all, it gets me out of the house for a little bit to the shops, um, but it's important for these people as well that don't see anybody. It's just a way of keeping everybody involved um, and volunteering is so important. We should all volunteer, if only for half an hour a week, that's all it needs. Perfect. January 2020 seemed like a normal new year to almost everyone. For Shelley Rubinstein, it marked the culmination of a successful career as an occupational psychologist when she was given a Lifetime Achievement Award by the British Psychological Society for her pioneering work and record of achievement as a psychologist. Shelley Rubinstein is my wife and I have nominated her today for the work she has done in supporting frontline workers in the pandemic, but also for her charitable work over the years. Shelley believes in giving opportunities to young postgraduate psychologists as properly paid interns, nurturing the careers of a significant number of them. When the pandemic struck the UK and businesses had to close, Shelley furloughed all of her staff. She then continued to keep things going, working all by herself. Shelley volunteered her time to health and care professionals and managers at all levels in the NHS, providing coaching and counselling to people who were close to breaking point due to the incredible strains placed upon them by the pandemic. She also provided pro bono support to the workers at the Fed who are having to deal under immense pressure with the catastrophe facing their clients in the Jewish community. And although the worst of the pa pandemic appears to be over, she is still going above and beyond what is required to provide support to those in frontline services who need it. In 2020, Shelley's mother, Faye Varley, died unexpectedly. Like so many others, Shelley had only been able to see her with the mother once during the lockdown a month beforehand. After the shiver, Shelley continued with her pro bono work. Hi, my name's Stephen Perlman and last year, March the 28th, just as we entered the first lockdown, uh, I set up with the help of my son Dan a, a quiz group on Facebook called Lonely Connect Quiz Club, the name based on the TV programme Only Connect. And I'd uh, do quizzes for the first four months I presented them all, uh, Sunday the harder cryptic quiz and Wednesday uh, was the, what I call the nog knop quiz, no Google, no people, just to see what you knew, general knowledge. Uh, and then after August, I threw it open to members of the group called Elsies, named after the initials LCQC. I personally like the challenge of dinbubs, another word I've made up, different ideas never been used before. I'll try and come up with something different. And in fact, uh, if I may plug my quiz book I brought out in November called the Slightly Different Quiz Book, uh, and that seems to have gone quite well. It's uh, certainly brought people together from different walks of life and new friendships have been formed. So I think it's, it's ticked a few boxes. So I think it was a worthwhile enterprise. Goodbye. Yeah. Okay.
Okay, so I do lit litter picking around the area. There's so much litter, it's unbelievable. Um, and that's what I do at least once a week. Uh, then I do volunteering for a few different charities. So one of them is Rainbow Surprise, which is a charity based in Crumpsall, and they do food deliveries. Okay, so with Paperweight, I offered to help them with admin, but what they had was a new CRM system and they needed help with IT. And I'm now on the help desk a few hours a week, so anybody can ring me, usually one of the caseworkers, so they often have problems with login and things like that, so I help them out uh, with that. We set up our own charitable trust in July last year and we give monthly donations to different charities and what we're, we're looking at most of all is education, poverty and medical charities. So we have a look at them, we see where the need is, see what the projects are uh, and then we, we fund them on an ongoing basis and people seem really happy. Well, I spend most of my week volunteering. I tend to do an exercise programme once a day. So apart from that, I'm really doing volunteering the rest of the time. Uh, and it's just been an opportunity for me to do this over COVID because for many years I cared for my parents and I was working and I didn't really have time to do any volunteering. So now that I'm retired and able to do this, I really enjoy doing the volunteering. Hi, we've nominated Joanne Lazarus. Joanne Lazarus, over the pandemic, has been carrying a load of um, Golden Girls all the way through, supporting them emotionally and physically. Um, the main part of her job was to do um, Zoom classes. So she first coached loads of women how to get on Zoom, help them with their computers, and running every single week, sometimes twice a week, quizzes, talks, art classes, um, baking demonstrations, keeping the ladies together, keeping them um, interested and just giving them something to look forward to for each week, which was unbelievable. Joanne is actually a born actress. She's just so dynamic. The women love her. She's warm and um, caring. She's nurturing and she understands where they're coming from. A lot of the ladies are lonely and she just brings such life force to the group. Gita has always been a very special friend to me, but I didn't know how much she did for people in the community until I became a single mum. She was always um, just looking out for people and going out of her way to help. When lockdown hit, single mums were so isolated and even with restrictions in place, Gita found different ways to make everybody in the single mommy network that we call Superwomen feel loved and important and helped us all feel brave. Um, sometimes I would come down in the morning and open the front door and hanging on the door handle would be a little parcel from Gita with just something small, a chocolate and a note or a little something that she'd um, she baked and or a magnet that she'd seen that she she thought I would find funny or encouraging um, she's incredible at knowing when to check in with people and always just thinking about how what else can she do to help single mums in Manchester feel more supported and I also really like it when she she sometimes she comes around she'll bring meringues or she happens to bring chocolate chip colours and it's really nice and she's really nice to all of us. During this lockdown, Ankita is very, very nice to me. Ankita is giving me things and texts me a lot. She's a very nice lady and she's always been nice to my family. She's very kind. agree quite an extraordinary group of individuals and uh, that was really a, a delightful film to watch um and so we've come really to uh, to the end of uh, of looking at all the different individuals and all the different groups that have been nominated this evening each one a star in their own right i'm joined once again by russell Kahn, president of the jewish representative council you're going to tell us russell about a rather a special letter that we've been sent yes angela thank you very much yes this is sent from lord greenhouse
who is the Minister of Housing, Communities and Local Government. And I read, uh, thank you for your letter to the Prime Minister about the Jewish Representative Council of Greater Manchester Region hosting a Community Stars event. I'm delighted to be sending you this message to celebrate the remarkable things you have achieved over the last year. 220 will be remembered as an incredibly difficult year, but also as a year when communities supported each other and many people of all ages took steps to reach out to those around them to offer help and support. Whilst the pandemic has stretched us all, it has also shone a light on how people have served their communities. It is right to recognise activities such as fundraising, volunteering, organising online activities or offering practical help with shopping and looking out for vulnerable neighbours. I want to take the opportunity to thank everyone who has stepped up to help this year, as well as congratulating all the nominees and the winners for their work. This event is a good reminder that it is faith that motivates many to play a part in our communities, and this should be celebrated. Whilst COVID restrictions, it was written in February, while COVID restrictions continue to impact our country, I know the Jewish community will continue to provide invaluable support for the vulnerable throughout. Many congratulations again for everything you have achieved over the last year. Yours, Lord Greenhouse. What did it mean receiving a letter like that, Russell? Oh yeah, it was it was very I was personally very touched and I think it shows as I said in my opening remarks, how much this administration is supported of the Jewish community. Now is probably not the time or the place to go into greater detail, but I can assure all our many listeners of this evening that this government in particular supports us in every way they can. An evening like this doesn't just happen. First and foremost, we must thank our sponsors for this evening who have very kindly uh, sponsored us, of course, Beaver Books, uh, the jewellers. But also, we must pay a special thank you to the organiser of this evening, the person whose brainchild this event really is, Susan Isaacs, the um, Youth and Community Officer. Susan, you really have done a tremendous job, and we know how hard you have worked over the last few months. Yeah, yeah. And you've been very ably assisted by her very charming assistant, De uh, Deborah Britstone. We must also thank Laurie Burnley Myers, who is our administrator, for all your hard work. A special thank you to Nathan Ray Production, our finest solution for the technical work for this evening. Also, we must thank the Nikki Alliance for allowing us to be here this evening. A special thank you, of course, has to go to our hostess, if you like, for this evening, the charming lady who kept everything together, uh, Angela Epstein, star of press, of TV, and I've said on a previous occasion, very much a legend in our own lifetime. <laughs> but as a community, we always have to pay, pay a very special thank you to those unsung heroes who are there and often do their work without any credit whatsoever. I refer, of course, to the CST, who guard us day and night and work tirelessly on our behalf. But Acheron the Acheron, as it says in another place, but above all, thank you has to go to the, each and every one of our wonderful nominees. You very much are the stars of this evening. Thank you very much, one and all, for watching. Well, really, how to follow that, by the way, thank you for being able to read my writing about the good bits about me, Russell. Uh, but, uh, but seriously, yes, absolutely. I mean, this bit is the easy volunteering bit, just sitting here and saying, have a look and have a look at this one and that one. Special thank you, as Russell said, to each and every person who featured this evening, without whom we would definitely be a poorer community. So thank you for your company. We're very, very happy to have had it. And, and thank you for watching. And we're going to leave you this evening with the lovely voice of, uh, of a young, a very charming young man, Benji Salomon, who I know has used his talents uh, for various good communal causes around the area. And accompanying um, his voice, we're going to see a montage of some of the, the some of the great volunteers that we are very, very happy to have in our community. And we're very, very lucky to do so. Uh, from us all, all of us here this evening, look after yourselves and thank you for watching. Never you.